In the previous Reactor 2.0 video, I showed you how you can take Right Fusion Live with the default configuration, which is so easy to do from the home screen of Reactor. You can manage your ATEM inputs, you can manage your cameras, basically adding them easily, and you can expect over in the panel. And this panel, by the way, is exactly the same as you see on the screen. So anything I do on the physical panel, changing cameras and so on, is reflected in the simulator. This is a more convenient environment for me to demonstrate and record videos, so this is why I do it. And uh, basically, the switching section of a Rack Fusion Live is populated with ATEM functionality, while over here we have a number of features just out of the box coming to us from the uh, default configurations that we put a lot of energy into providing. Why? Because in this way, we are able to get you guys started real quick. That's the number one thing. You buy our products, you buy it based on the form factor. And I mean, if you want a combo device, this is cool. If you want uh, an RCP, we have um, RCP Mini here, which is uh, coming up, not released, nobody knows about it. And we also have uh, like PDC Extreme, RCP Pro and so on. Working out of the box with various cameras because we put effort into it. You don't need to customize everything from the start. But today I'll show you how you can do that Previously, this is what Unisketch was known for. This is what has been difficult in Reactor because we haven't had the time to actually bring that out to you, but Reactor 2.0 is just that. And in the previous video, I showed you how you could even take your existing custom configurations, oh, sorry, default configurations and add to them because inside the configuration, we had user sections. We also had a section just for the PVC controls where we could adjust those. We had a menu section over here where we can basically using different pages, add functionality onto those pages. And uh, you know, that, that that's the perfect way to combine customization and the power of our default configurations, which are highly automized and uh, automated and uh, also quite complex to, to understand. Okay, so back in the home screen, what I want to do now is to basically create a custom configuration. So I'll just do that and call it test. It doesn't really matter a whole lot what you call your configurations, but it's a custom configuration. And if I go to the config tab right now, you can see that I have the test configuration in place and I select background as my layer, basically. What this means is we have a completely blank canvas completely blank canvas for now putting functionality onto it. And what I will try now is to kind of expand your mind on what we can do here. But the important concept is we have pages, and we have shift levels down here. It's like Unisketch. Unisketch had states and shift levels. Reactor has pages and shift levels. Shift levels is a widely known concept in broadcast. Pages is a widely known concept in everywhere else. Like Stream Deck, for instance, would have pages. Companion has pages. Reactor has pages. And Unisketch had states, which were essentially pages. So we'll also make pages today. But first, I want to show you how easy it would be to just take four buttons and make them change um, uh, preview on your ATEM switcher. Over here on the side, I have my active devices. This is from the previous video where I actually added an ATEM Mini. So it's there, it's connected on this IP address. And I have another two cameras as well, which is uh, nice. But the ATEM Mini is such a cool tool for demo. So I'll just stick to that basically. And you see on the ATEM Mini, we have, you know, um, program preview actions, um, behaviors, we call them behaviors, which because it's, a behavior is not just the action you send to the switcher. It's also the feedback coming from the switcher. This is why we can't call it an action. It's a behavior because it's how it behaves, both in terms of what it sends and what it receives. All right. So this is the word we have chosen to be more accurate. And uh, we have auxiliary output. We have upstream key, downstream key uh, behaviors. We have media player, transition behaviors, card auto, and so on. So these are super easy to just assign. Now let's move forward on preview select. Okay. So I selected that one. And now we need to select a few parameters for this. We need to pick which ME row, which obviously is ME1 on an ATEM Mini. Then we need to pick which input it is. Actually, if I, I can only pick input number one here, and that means that all buttons are now input number one, okay? But, um, and if I go into my simulation mode, then you can basically see that, yeah, if I click any of these buttons, it will just give me, you know, input number one on preview. Let's go back, because what I really wanted to do is to use the batch editor. Because inside the batch editor, you can basically adjust this. Device index is fine. That's hard coded to the device index one, which matches device index and device ID is essentially the same inside of Reactor, wherever it's used. It's a variable that is used to 
basically select the device that we are talking to. And that is very useful when you deal with cameras because often you have multiple PTC cameras. They have different device IDs and you need to change between them. But in case of the ATEM switch, it's rare that people have multiple ATEM switches in the system. So we can, it's fine going with device index number one. ME row number one, the only one existing in the ATEM switcher. Input number one, there definitely are other inputs. So I'll just place my cursor up there, press the plus one button and boom. Now we have input number one, two, three, four, right here. And let's just simulate it. So, yep, that works. Atom switcher software. Let's just show you that there is full correspondence. And um, of course, when I do this, then you know it's changing the atom switcher. So super cool. That was very easy, quick to do this. Now, what I fancy is that we could go on a shift level, for instance, and then put something else. So if I go to the shifted state, then I would drag across these. And once again, I would actually add preview select. But in this case, I would um, select ME number one. I would then pick, let's just say color bars. And then I would use, not nah, just pick them one at a time basically, um, because that gives me the names. So I can pick color one. I can pick, uh, let me see, color two and media player. So this is my shift level, okay? So media player number one. All right, let's go to simulation mode. In other words, I choose color bars, color one, color two, media player, and that probably corresponds to what we see over here. Media player number one was picked if I choose color one and bars is down there. Okay, that's all fine. And this is in the shifted state, all right? So we basically have normal and shifted. Now I need navigation, right? So shift levels are generally baked in automatically. And I already have a shift key on my panel. So let's just click this one over here. And then we can basically say um, navigation. Let's just do a shift hold down action here. So let's just zoom out and then see what's going on. If it do what we think, you see, click, 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 click. Okay, that's pretty cool. Easy to add and so on. Now let's zoom in. And I want to have another layer that will give me program select, all right? So what I will do now is to just drag across these and then, uh, no wait, I'll add a new, I'll add a new layer here and I'll disable transparency, which means that it will completely override whatever is underneath. And I think that's actually not the default mode that we would go in. Um, but just to illustrate to you, um, is that a good idea? Okay, we'll just do it. Okay, program. Uh, program row. So just add this. Now, if I go to program row, you see that it's going to clear out everything underneath, in, including my shift key, which is actually normally undesirable. But this is how a stream deck would work. This is how companion would work. Generally, they seem to have pages that when you have a new page, it's just a completely blank canvas and there's like nothing from your background page shining through. That's unlike Unisketch. If you remember Unisketch, you had like a background state and everything on that state would be inherited if you in another state did not put in another action. So that's actually why this is not enabled by default. We could actually make one called program transparency like this. Okay. Ah, come on. Yep. So I have a transparent page here. You see, if I go to a transparent page, I would actually by default see whatever is underneath that is on the background here. But it won't, and by the way, these green markings show you where actions are assigned, all right? So we have we have actions assigned over here and on the shift key. And if I go to the shifted state, you see that I still have four actions assigned over there. But this one is not with the green border indicating that the shift um, the, the, the shift action that we, uh, behavior that we put on here, I'm sorry, I'm even confused myself about actions and behaviors, but uh, the shift behavior we put on here um, uh, earlier is on the background layer. All right, so um, I'll go to the transparent uh, page here. And then if I, let me see, I could just add on these two, basically add program select real quick here. ME number one, input number one, just quickly batch edit, make this one, two. Okay, done. Now, all right, so I basically have, you see on these two keys, I have program select, but not on these two. I still have preview select because I'm on a transparent layer. I changed only these two. And if I go back here, if you see, if I, if I go back to the background layer, you see green border around these 
And if I go to this one, you see green border around these two, but not on these. It means that on this layer, I have only made overriding behaviors on these two buttons and not on these buttons. So you will always see whatever is in the background. This would be different on the program layer. So I'll just drag across here and then program select. And then if I do the same, yeah, you already see that it's basically overriding everything else. And there we go, one, two, three, so real quick. Okay, so you see this, this one just overrides everything. We have program select here, we have this one where we basically made a transparent layer. And I think the transparent layers is the way to go. I'm just pointing this out because the transparent layers, you, you need to know what to look out for. You need to see when you, when you navigate between them, you need to observe what are the highlighted components that are in fact carrying, uh, carrying other behaviors on this transparent layers because this is actually coming from the background layer underneath. The final thing we want to do is to show how we can navigate between the pages that we've got. So let's just do that and put it on the key up here, U1. Basically what you do, go to the background layer to the normal layer because we want this to be available uh, through the transparency for everything. And therefore we'll just scroll down to the navigation section. We'll have a, a, um, a button we could basically use go to page, but what we usually do is to switch page, which is like a cyclic uh, function. So having that right here now on this key means that let's go into simulation as I'm pressing it, it's actually going to, to program. See, the thing is on the program layer, we created, you know, it was opaque, it was overriding everything underneath. If I go to this one, you still you see that the selector is actually down there. And then I can click this one, get back to background, and now it's being overridden here again. So of course, if you actually wanted to have a non-transparent layer, you would just do that. And then you would have to basically add navigation here as well, which could either be, oh, sorry, now I picked the wrong one. You can either choose go to page or switch page. Switch page will always take the next one. It's cyclic. Go to page would just allow you to pick like the next one, which could be program transparency. So in fact, what we should see now is that despite having this non-transparent layer, we should still see that this is actually working. All right. Um, the other thing you could do, this is experimental. I don't know if it's going to work, but if you go to this layer, you might also be able to simply delete behaviors. Confirm. And what I think we just did is to basically, yes, by deleting behavior on the non-transparent layer, we actually created a hole in that layer for this particular component so that it shines through from the back that uh, we have navigation here. We could actually do the same for the shift key. So we'll just delete behaviors and then we'll see that the shift key is in fact uh, picking up its its function. If I press it, you can see it's reacting. And over here, I am also cycling through. So that was actually a very successful little experiment. I was unsure if it would work. The difference between clear delete behaviors obviously deleted the behavior and made a hole in the layer. Clear contents would mean that we just clear out the contents. But in this case, nothing should really happen. <laughs> okay, so something did happen. Um, uh, undo, why not undo? <laughs> Great, we have undo in a web app running, by the way, on the panel. So um, something to be proud of. And I also want to highlight that none of this is actually running on a PC. I'm sitting here with a super powerful MacBook, but all it does is running a web browser to let me manage the UI of the uh, Skahoy device. So that's pretty exciting. Thanks for watching this one, guys. You can build up your own configurations with as many pages as you want and as many shift levels as you want. And there are even more advanced things you can do with sections. You don't have to have them for the full control. You can also specify sections on the controller, which um, are those where you want pages to, to navigate through. And that's for a different video.